Hey Lakers fans, this is Jonathan Hernandez of the Lakers Legacy Podcast, and today I am coming to you guys with my first semi-real-time Lakers news update. It'll be more raw, unfiltered, and less edited, so I'll be stumbling a lot here and there, so bear with me. And we'll see if this is something I'll consistently start adding to my video rotation. You guys let me know if I should. Having said that, today we got our first real update of the offseason on how Jared Vanderbilt is progressing in his on-court basketball activities. And that update, unfortunately, is not very good. So today I want to specifically talk about this clip from the most recent Lake Show podcast episode that just dropped today. The Lake Show podcast, by the way, is the official Lakers podcast with Ali Clifton and Chris McGee. They had reporter Mike Bresnahan on in today's episode, and he gave us a little update on how Jared Vanderbilt is doing injury-wise. So let's take a quick listen to that right now. One second. Here's that clip. Vando? Vando's going to be interesting. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm not sure he'll be ready for um, training camp or even for the uh, preseason games. Can someone tell me what it is? It's a foot injury. Yeah, yeah it's a foot injury. Still? So, I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, so he opted not to have... Here. Yeah, he opted not to have a procedure uh, in season when he got hurt in February. Yeah. And uh, so we'll see if he's ready to go. I don't have a lot of details on it, but um, I, I'm not sure he'll be ready for training camp. Regular season, different story. Hopefully he's ready by then, Allie, but nothing concrete on him yet. So yeah, that's the clip. Um, there's our first real update on Jared Vanderbilt's health this offseason. And it's not the update we wanted to hear, very obviously. Um, now, the sky isn't falling yet. It sounds like Jared Vanderbilt could still be ready by the regular season. But at the same time, we also have kind of heard this story before with Vando. This was the case last season when he suffered his left heel bursitis injury to start the year off after that first preseason game against the Golden State Warriors. After he sustained that injury, reports said that Jared Vanderbilt would be ready by the time the first game of the regular season started, and that never ended up being the case. Fast forward to 20 games later, and Jared Vanderbilt would miss, yeah, the first 20 games of the season and wouldn't return till December 2nd. So, I'm not sure if I can believe any such reports that say he could be ready for the start of the regular season. The biggest takeaway that I got from this clip is that Jared Vanderbilt is not 100% healthy, and he hasn't even, I don't think he's begun to, I, I don't think he's started doing any sort of five-on-five -five scrimmage on-court basketball drills yet. And so that is a huge problem especially if we look to last season and see how, how long it took Jared Vanderbilt to shake off the rust and finally round into full form. Again, this is not the update we wanted to hear, given how much the Lakers and Lakers fans were banking on the, the return of healthy Vando to internally uplift this run-it-back Lakers team that didn't make any real new offseason moves to their roster. So if Vando's not healthy for training camp and preseason with a new coach in J.J. Redick, that's, that's a huge problem because training camp and preseason is a pretty significant acclimation period that he'll be missing out on that will surely set him back even when he does return. That and also he just, he's just going to lack the in-game reps with his teammates to gain that rhythm and cohesion in Reddick's new system that he wants to run, that's going to be so crucial for the Lakers' chances of getting off to a good start this upcoming season. So, and so yeah, that's just that's just a huge bummer. This this new update out of Mike Bresnahan is such a huge bummer to hear, and it maybe puts a bit of a stain on the start of the Lakers' season when you try and project out how well they'll fare right out of the gate, since. Jared Vanderbilt is such an integral part of this team's defensive identity. Obviously, this is going to place a heavier emphasis on the actual point-of-attack role players that this team still has, who are apparently healthy at the very least. Guys like Gabe Vincent and Max Christie are going to have to step up in a big way. We were already sort of anticipating that, but now we're going to have to anticipate that even more. 
and and I think they can and will step up. Um, and then Rui Hachimura is also just going to have to enter this season with a renewed dedication to the defensive side of the ball, a renewed dedication to going after it on the glass, and he's just going to have to improve his overall defensive motor and awareness if the Lakers plan to do anything substantial this season. Um, but again, who knows? Maybe Jared Vanderbilt is fine by preseason. Obviously, we're crossing fingers, and that's the hope. How fine he is in terms of full health, though, even if he is able to play in preseason, will be the true question. Like, are we going to get 70% Jared Vanderbilt through preseason? And then when can we expect him to round into 90, 90 to 100% Vando? Um, but yeah, now that we have a clear idea of just how inactive Jared Vanderbilt has been this offseason... I think that may give us a little more insight into what the Lakers front office did or didn't do this summer as well, because I know a lot of fans were mad that the veteran minimum player option guys in Christian Wood, Jackson Hayes, and most especially Cam Reddish, fans were mad that those guys got one player options and then number two, that those players all opted in. On top of that, fans were mad that the front office didn't just salary dump those guys and attach some seconds to them in order to open up a roster spot or two for another free agent. But having said that, now seeing where Jared Vanderbilt's health status lies, I think we may be now, I, I think we're now seeing why the front office may not have been so gung ho to move off of actual rotation players, players who actually helped last season. It wasn't consistent help, but it was they helped in various portions of the season. Now we're seeing why the front office wasn't so gung-ho to move off of these actual rotation players by tacking on additional assets on top of them just to free up roster spots. And realistically, we would be we, we would have been freeing up a roster spot for who exactly? I don't see any realistic veteran minimum free agents who were on the market that we could have had who are definitively better than Jackson Hayes and Christian Wood. And even when it comes to a guy like Cam Reddish, who's very flawed as a player and isn't a, a good overall player, name me the best point of attack defender on the market who could be had for the veteran minimum, who's also 6'8", that beats out Cam Reddish when it comes to that one skill of point of attack defense. And so... If the free agent and trade market was already shot and was already going to be ha hamstrung by this new CBA regardless, it kind of seems like a silver lining and a good thing that Jackson A's, Christian Wood, and Cam Reddish all opted into their contracts. Because again, the Lakers may actually need all of them if Jared Vanderbilt's going to be absent to start the season or looks hobbled throughout any early portion of the season. And so, yeah, the, the players that most fans wanted to so easily salary dump in Cam Reddish may actually end up being a crucial insurance piece for the Lakers in helping uphold the integrity of their defense to start the season. And I'm talking specifically about Cam Reddish because let's be clear about Cam. Cam Reddish is not a good overall NBA player. And no team should be consistently counting on Cam Reddish to be an integral part of their rotation. But he is good at one thing the Lakers need help in, and that's point of attack defense. The same point of attack defense he displayed for the Lakers last November when he helped AD hold down the defensive fort in Vando's absence by averaging 2.4 steals that month and locking down guys like Kevin Durant, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard, all the way to LA's IST championship win in which he actually had his best overall game of the season in a game that didn't count versus the Indiana Pacers where he had like nine points, three blocks, hit a clutch three. You guys know what I'm saying with regards to Cam Reddish's defensive Lynn Sanity run last November. Even looking at a guy like Christian Wood, having a healthy Christian Wood back is going to be so essential for the Lakers, not only for his rebounding, but also for his lanky perimeter defense as well, which is an area that I think he particularly excelled in last year, perimeter defense-wise. So, and then Jackson Hayes, you know, will give us that explosive athleticism and oomph um, on both sides of the floor. So it's not all doom and gloom. The Lakers have enough requisite insurance from a length and size standpoint to cover 
for Vando if he's not fully 100% to start the year off. But yeah, it's just today's update is not the glowing news update you'd hope for when all you want to do as a fan heading into media day is to be fully gung-ho and optimistic about the start of a new season. And it doesn't look like we can 100% get there if Jared Vanderbilt is not ready to play on the court. Now, the bigger concern for me here is how long are Jared Vanderbilt's injury woes going to continue? Because dating back to high school and college, Vando has had a long and tricky history with foot injuries, and while he's had a relatively and and while he's had a relatively healthy NBA career, you have to wonder if those foot ailments from before are starting to come back to bite him once again. And if they are, can the Lakers actually rely on Vanderbilt long term? Now, Vanderbilt is in the first year of his four-year extension where he's making around 10 to $12 million the next four years. How long can the Lakers ride that contract of Vando's out? So, yeah, I think they're going to have to assess Jared Vanderbilt's uh, tradeability because forget about the Vando versus Rui starter debates. Um, at this point, Rui should probably just start given Vando's murky health. But going beyond that, if Vando is going to continue to be a health question mark, is that going to push the Lakers to truly make a trade to upgrade Vanderbilt's position? And if they do upgrade Jared Vanderbilt's position, do they consider trading Jared Vanderbilt himself out? Yeah, it's a tough question because I love Vanderbilt as a role player. But yeah, I don't, anyways, I don't want to be too morbid about all of this. These are just my initial straight thoughts on the matter. I ultimately hope Jared Vanderbilt's ready for training camp or at the very least, hopefully he can play in a few preseason games and eventually put this foot injury behind him. The Lakers are going to need a healthy Jared Vanderbilt this upcoming season if they plan to make any noise in a brutally deep Western Conference. And so get well soon, Vando. I think the other bigger issue here is just the Lakers medical staff and how coy they've been about these updates because Jared, Jared Vanderbilt was cleared to play uh, in the in the first round of the Nugget series and apparently he can't, he can't even get on the basketball court and he hasn't gotten on the basketball court this offseason so that's a little bit concerning but yeah I'll end things here because I'm starting to ramble that'll do it for this semi real-time news Lakers update um, let me know if you guys enjoyed this type of raw stream of consciousness type of talk on my end and maybe i'll do more of them as the season progresses but yeah that'll do it till next time please remember to click the subscribe button on this channel like the video ring the notification bell comment down below and stay tuned for a jordan goodwin breakdown video that i should have out maybe sometime early next week so keep a lookout for that but till then I will catch you guys later. This has been Jonathan Hernandez of the Lakers Legacy Podcast. Peace.